Welcome to module 3 everyone. Let's take a look at some of the fundamental concepts of engineering drawing and then learn how to create different types of views using the SOLIDWORKS such as sectional views, auxiliary views, detail views, the aligned sectional views and the break views. Also in this module we will be looking at how to create dimensions uh, using various methods such as baseline dimensions or the chain dimensions uh, for the engineering drawings using the ANSI standards. So let's get started with engineering drawing fundamentals and let's uh, do a quick uh, review of what are the basic fundamentals used in the engineering drawing. Okay, So we will be specifically looking at what is the difference between a third angle and the first angle projection method. We will also look at what are the different types of surfaces and edges such as the normal surfaces, slanted surfaces, oblique and rounded surfaces and also what are the hidden lines, what is the precedence of the lines used in the drawing and the compound lines. Once we're done looking at all the drawing fundamentals then we will move on to the SOLIDWORKS to look at uh, different types of uh, views uh, that can be created in an engineering drawing. So first let's begin with the types of projections used in the engineering drawing. In the perspective projection as you can see a screen is kept between the observer and the solid model. The rays are emanating from a single source point where the observer is located and all the rays are then going in the different directions to all the uh, extreme edges of the solid model so that its uh, projection can be obtained uh, on this screen which is kept in between the observer and the solid model. The important thing in the perspective projection is that all the rays which are coming out of the solid model's extreme corner points are converging to a single source point which is at the observer station. So there is just one viewpoint and the rays are all the non-parallel lines, uh, lines of sight which are radiating from a point. And naturally the location of the screen becomes important. If the screen is uh, closer to the object, then you're going to get a larger size of the uh, projected image of, of the solid model. And on the other hand, if the screen is closer to the observer, then the image is going to be appearing uh, smaller in size as compared to the true dimensions of the solid model. But in either case, the projected image on the screen is not going to be a true surface or edge uh, representation of the solid model and so there is a perspective uh, you know in this uh, engineering drawing. The other type of projection method is the parallel projection. In the parallel projection unlike the perspective projection all the lines of sight are parallel from the uh, user going to the solid model. So it doesn't depend where you place the screen in between the observer and the solid model. The rays are always parallel. Since the rays are always parallel, the projected image on the screen will always be the same. It, and it doesn't matter if it is closer to the solid model or if it is closer to the observer. You're always going to get the same image size of the uh, solid models projection on that screen. And that is the principle of the parallel projection. Now let's take a look at the different types of uh, classifications of the perspective and the parallel projections. Uh, this is kind of like a busy slide but uh, it's I think important to look at uh, the different types of uh, classifications. To begin with the perspective projection, we have the linear projection or the linear perspective projection and the aerial perspective. The aerial perspective 
projection indicates that the objects are appearing either uh, at uh, closer to the observer or farther from the observer depending on the focus uh, of that uh, projected image. So if the objects are clearer in terms of the focus, then they are closer to the uh, viewpoint and the images which are faded or at a less desired focus, these images are considered to be farther from the observer. And so what the aerial perspective projection does is that it adds the depth in the 2D uh, plane of the projected uh, images of the solid components. In the linear perspective, uh, it depends on in how many orthogonal directions the rays are converging. Uh, remember the principle of perspective projection is that the rays are converging to a single point in a particular direction from which the projection is desired. So if the rays, as you can see in the first image, if the rays are converging to a single point, but not in the other two directions, then it becomes a one point perspective. and Accordingly, then, if the rays are converging in two different orthogonal direction, but not in the third direction, as you can see, um, the parallel lines here in one of the orthographic directions indicate that uh, it is not the perspective image in that direction. So it becomes a two-point perspective. And three-point perspective naturally means that in all the three standard orthographic directions, x, y, and z, the rays are converging to a single point and so it gives sort of a distorted image uh, of the solid component but that is basically what the uh, linear perspective projection method is now the second category which is the parallel projection method can be further classified into oblique projections and the axonometric projections the oblique projections is defined based on how much is the depth of the solid model that is being projected on this 2D plane. So if we are indicating half of its uh, original depth, then this becomes a cabinet projection. If it's a full depth, then it is called as a cavalier projection. And if the depth is neither half nor full, but some other value, then it is called as a general 3D projection. Uh, using the parallel projection method and you can notice here that in all the three orthographic directions the rays are parallel uh, to each other so they are not converging to a single point unlike in the perspective projection method okay and the orthographic projections are then further classified into axonometric and the multi-view projection the axonometric projections as typically used in the CAD solid modeling softwares uh, utilizes the angles between the uh, three ortho uh, you know between the orthogonal axis so if you have equal angle measured between the orthogonal axis for example here let's say this is the um, X uh, this orthogonal direction is Y and the third orthogonal direction is let's say C and we are basically projecting this three-dimensional solid component on a two-dimensional plane but essentially we can measure the angle between XZ or YZ or, or XY between these straight lines on the uh, piece of paper or on a 2D plane so once we measure these angles and all these angles if they are equal value which you know should be equal to 120 degrees times 3 is 360 degrees so if all the angles are equal then the view that is represented is called as the isometric view in the diametric view only two directions are making equal angles so in this case if angle a is equal to angle B uh, so if this is angle a and this is the angle B X Y plane angle B and YZ plane angle A. If these two values are equal, then the view becomes the diametric 
projection. Okay, and in the trimetric projection, uh, it's it's counterintuitive to how the dimetric uh, projection uh, definition is given. Is that in the trimetric view, none of the angles are equal. Okay, so that becomes the trimetric uh, axonometric projection, and this is by default a three-dimensional view as projected uh, on a 2D plane in most solid modeling software such as SolidWorks. And then finally, let's take a look at the multi-view projection, which is typically used in the engineering drawings and the standard uh, orthogonal projections in three directions, X, Y, and Z, are then indicated for a solid model. So uh, we can look at the three orthographic directions, the X, Y, and uh, Z, and we can figure out the views. For example, uh, the view, the common view is the front view, and then you have a side view and the plan, which could be either from the top or from the bottom, and the side view could be either from the right or could be uh, from the left. Okay. So these three standard orthographic views, the front view, the top view, and the right view are represented in the L-shape format on the uh, 2D plane, <coughs> with the top view being on the top, underneath that is the front view, and to the right of the front is the right view, and this is the third angle projection, uh, which uses the parallel projection based on the orthographic uh, projection method and providing the multi-views uh, based on these three uh, directions. So now let's take a look at the difference between the first angle and the third angle projection. Most commonly used third angle projection uh, in the United States uh, follows the ANSI standards, either ANSI metric or ANSI inches. However, in some of the countries, for example, in European countries, instead of the third angle projection, the first angle projection uh, for the multi-views is used. And now let's take a look at what is the difference between the first and the third angle projection method. If we consider a solid model here, and let's say the view from B uh, is the front view, then based on the front view, uh, we can decide the directions from, uh, you know, the other orthographic axis uh, as the uh, type of view such as the view from the A should be the right view with reference to the uh, front view. Then view from uh, the back should be the C view. If we look at this object from the top, that becomes the top view, which is the view from the direction D. E is the view from the bottom. And F is the view from the left. So. We have three orthographic directions, X, Y, and Z. And if we uh, consider both positive and negative uh, directions, plus X, minus X, plus Y, minus Y, plus Z, minus Z. And so that's how it becomes six different directions that you can visualize the object. And these six directions forms six different types of views, <coughs> such as right view, front view, black, uh, back view, top view, bottom view, and the left view. Now the general industry practice to use uh, the terms such as a front view, which is the common to both the first angle and the third angle view. Then if you are using the right view for the side view, and if you are using the top view for the plan, then it forms a third angle projection system. So front view is common to both first and the third angle. Then the two other views such as right and the top with the front becomes the third angle projection and left bottom and the front becomes the first angle projection method. How do we define and decide that? Uh, why is it called as a first angle or the third angle projection? Let's take a look at uh, this image. 
Now, let us say that we divide this space into four different quadrants. So let us say that this is the first quadrant, positive x, positive y. This is the second quadrant, negative x, positive y. Third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. If we place this solid model in the first quadrant and we use the parallel projection method so that we want to obtain its uh, impressions on the screen. So let's say we have a vertical screen and the horizontal screen perpendicular to each other so that it forms these four different quadrants. And let's say the normal to this piece of paper or normal to this uh, plane is the front view direction. So with respect to that front view direction, if we want to obtain its image on the vertical screen, we have to have the observer uh, sitting in the second quadrant that will be looking at this uh, projected image on the screen from the left side. And similarly, if the observer is sitting in the fourth quadrant, uh, that observer will be able to see the projection on the horizontal screen when looking at from the bottom side. And since now the object is kept in the first quadrant, it's called as the first angle projection and the three standard views becomes the front view, the left view and the bottom view. Okay, so that is how the first angle projection system method is formed. And similarly for the third angle projection system, in order to get its projection on the horizontal screen, we have to look at it from the top side for an observer sitting in the second quadrant. And similarly, the observer sitting in the fourth quadrant is uh, getting the image on the vertical screen when looking at from the right side of this component. So therefore, the third angle projection method, which places the component in the third quadrant, has the projections as the standard front view, then the top view, and the right view. So these three views becomes the uh, third angle projection views, and the front left bottom becomes the first angle projection views. However, all the views are shown in the L-shaped format with the front view being common to both the projection methods and if it's a third angle projection it becomes the right view to the right of the front and top view to the top of the front and in the first angle projection method we use the front view as the common view then the left view which is still placed to the right of the front view and the bottom view, which is still placed on the top of the front view. So the representation is still in the L-shaped form, only the side view and the plan are changed based on the type of the projection method.